Hello, thank you once again for watching us. We'll have an upload of this on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and then also through 3news.com. You can also get the latest upload of this through the handles of 3FM 92.7. But uh, we want to speak to somebody who is well known across the country, but especially in Christendom, and is one of the biggest prophets of the day. Very young man, I have to say, but he's also um, the leader and founder of the Prophetic Hill Chapel. And we're talking about Prophet Nigel Gazy. He is speaking to us um, right now. And uh, I have to say, I uh, thank you for speaking to us. It's a great time speaking to you. But I have to say that um, you seem to have carved an image and a reputation for being controversial. Why, why very controversial? I would say that to use yes and no, yes in the sense that anybody that is doing the work of God to the point of impact, and definitely some will see it as you are worrying them because people that are in our court, people that are in other, they say they will feel that you are hating the satanic base. So, but to a large extent, I think that all is about the impact. That Jesus came on earth and he died at a very young age, but he made an impact. Muhammad came, went very early. It's about impact. Siddhartha Gautama about impact. So the essence of living is all about impact. And I believe that I'm making impact and a positive impact. So controversial or otherwise. And you cannot be a prophet without not being controversial. What the regular person will say, controversial. Because the prophecy, to a large extent, you are the only person seeing it. You are seeing what the regular person is not seeing. So, cut it and call it to be controversial. And f over the years, the thing that come out of me, they are, they, are, they are shocking. They are very, very shocking. So, if you say that controversial, I'll say yes. Because you say you are in Ghana, you prophesy that Donald Trump will lose. And he lost. I think that that is a little bit. So I'll say so. I'll say so. You prophesied that John Dramani Mahama will win the last election. You didn't win. How come? I was inspired to say, because I'm not the one that prophesies. It's the Spirit of God that enhances me. The Spirit of God comes on me. And I speak just as the Spirit of God leads me. So I don't prophesy. It's a Spirit that comes on me. And then I speak the mind of God. And the glory here is not to me, it's to God. I don't surrogate the glory of God. So I like when they say that I was inspired to prophesy because I will prophesy by inspiration. To you and any right, a right and balanced person watching your most watched session now knows very well that, uh, quote and unquote, the former president, uh, because of the time we are in, I'll choose my words very careful. But uh, I think that where I stand, uh, the last general election, and here too, because of the times we are in, I will speak figuratively. Uh, the former president of a certain nation I call Umufia, he's the one that won, not the current ruling system. But again, it is an unseen hand that tempered with it. I believe that everybody, because you can't have majority in parliament, you can't have majority in parliament and lose the presidential. And I'm a student of history. I, I'm a student of history. Anybody that's, if the opposition gets six million, ruling party gets six million, the West should be run off. The West should be run off. And we all know what happened in Umufia, a place like South Techiman. We all know what happened. We all saw what happened in their parliament. So I think where I'm standing, I think that the prophecy came to pass. The prophecy I was inspired to say that the former president, Kwame Dramani, will win. I think that where I'm sitting, I, I hold and they themselves know. Then everybody watching me who is not balanced, who is not colored, with respect to political colors, knows that very well that the former president, uh, that's it. Now these so-called prophecies that you're led to give led the IGP to convene a meeting of some of the topmost, if not all the top leaders within the church of this country. And it's all because of the prophecies of some of you, if not all of you. you the prophets. What do you make of that meeting and the outcome itself? Okay, again, Roland, I'll say that uh, I, I followed, I followed out my attention. They, uh, uh, they elected me, so I followed the news. And I feel that the people that went there, I salute our, our Christian leaders there. Uh, Charismatic, the Pentecostals, and the church. The, I saw the Assemblies of God, sorry, Assemblies of God Church, their superintendent, their chairman, and Church of Pentecost. Other people, I don't know them. But I didn't see any representation from the prophetic. 
I didn't see any representation from the prophetic. I didn't see Prophet Osuben Pan. I didn't see Bishop Salifah Marco there. I didn't see I didn't see Prophet Opokunsia there and other people that we all know that they are prophet or other people that they prophesy. So it's one number one. It also talks about how weak the frontiers of the prophetic is. But the people that when we have we have we have seven denomination. We have we have the Orthodox, the Anglican, the Catholicism. The Methodists, the Pentecost, and we have the charismatic, then we have the prophetic. They all represented. But the prophetic and this going ongoing issue is all about the prophetic. And the major prophet in the nation, I did not see them there. When I'll say that it exposes us how weak and how on we are not united. The prophetic strong uh, faith, we are not united. That's the first one. And also it talks about the fact and also suggests us that the the state's apparatus. Uh, they have to do what is needful because it's like aeroplane, it's like ship, it's a car, it's all a vehicle, it's all a mode of transport. But you can't put plane on a ship. Uh, its purpose will not be realized. So if you call the Anglican, whom they don't prophesy, if you call the Orthodox, whom they don't so much, they are not frontiers when it comes to the prophetic, then it's like you are putting a ship. On the on a, on a, on a wrong on a wrong motorway, you understand? It's like putting a ship on the on the on the motorway, but a ship must not be on a, a ship must be on the sea. So if the state apparatus want to really talk about the prophetic, if they want us to educate them about the prophetic, you don't go pick the Anglican. Respectfully, we respect all of them, but you pick the prophetic. Those are like us. I prophesy by the spirit of God. Uh, El Benar prophesies. Prophet Osu Bempa, Bishop Salifah Mwakon. I mean, they are the first generation of prophets. Then after that, it will come to Prophet Ajima Prempe, my spiritual father, Apostle Kofi Efriye, you know, and the rest. You know, and it will come to us. So really, you're talking about prophecy. Uh, you can't go and call a teacher to talk about prophecy. We have fivefold ministry. We have apostle, teacher, evangelist, and pastor. A pastor can talk about it, but a pastor cannot really go deep when it comes to what really prophetism is. So if, I don't know if I've, been, I've, I've tried to answer your question, Mr. Walker. And I have to say the service is worried, if not the national security apparatus, that your prophecy is not necessarily you as a person, but all of you within the prophetic ministry or ministration seem to be causing fear and panic and insecurity in our country. Anybody that says that, I think that that person is carnal. That person is very, very carnal. But the work we are doing is not academic, it's not intellectual, it's spiritual. And you cannot marry the physical and the spiritual. Uh, you can't use the academic or trained mind to rate or to judge or to evaluate or rate the spiritual mind. Before you can, you can, you can come to the party to understand us, you have to also be spiritual. You have to also be spiritual. So if somebody says that we are causing fear and panic and the rest, I don't know what they mean. I don't, I don't understand them because I'm a spiritual person. And don't forget that God himself is a fearful God. And prophecy is the word of God. The Bible says in Revelation that the testimony of Jesus is a word of prophecy. And the word of God itself is fearful. And the spiritual things all over the world, it will, even if it's not Christianity alone, all over the world, Mr. Walker, spiritual things must be fearful. So if you want to say that a prophet is saying this and a prophet is saying that and it's affecting the natural physical security, I don't think that I've never seen any Ghanaian prophet take a gun, go and shoot somebody physically. I've never seen any Ghanaian prophet gather together that maybe they are going to stage a coup or whatever, whatever. So what, what is the uh, insecurity that is caused? We are rather helping the nation. If we are the gate watchers. We are, we are gate watchers. We are, we are standing in the gap. If I've traveled by the message of God, apart from Latin America, I've gone to all the continents of the world. And I'll tell you that the whole world, the prophetic is in Ghana. The whole world, the prophetic is in Ghana. And, and we are praying for the president. We are praying for the judiciary. We are praying for the legislature. We see there are a lot of things that we do. I tell you that you see most of, the, most of you, the media men, you are the cause of the problem because you only come to the prophetic churches, so to say, only 31 December. And you pick just 1% or 0.009% of what we do throughout the year. Then you go and blow it out that maybe Prophet So say this. So. No, no, that is not fear and panic. If we are talking about fear and panic, if the finance minister come out and tell me that the government payroll is full, that's fear and panic. For example, if you say that a former first lady will die, uh, that is as serious as it can be, or uh, a former second lady would die. That, that's 
purely causing fear and panic. If we are talking about fear and panic, I just read in the papers my younger brothers and sisters who are, are queuing from LWAC to a, a, a U.S. Embassy for fire service. And, and, and even their, their faith cannot be told. That is fear and panic. So, you see, there are more serious things to, to, to deal with. There are more serious things. So whoever has made his mind or his or a target to come after the church and the prophetic that we are causing insecurity, that is no insecurity at all. Insecurity is the rise of fool. That is insecurity. Insecurity is my mates that are completely gone with and they are still jobless. That is insecurity. We are talking about the mind of God. That is the mind of God. So if you say that insecurity of fear, I don't get you. It depends on where you stand. It depends on where you are standing. But for me, a spiritual thing cannot be interpreted with the, the, the regular. No, I cannot pretend to be a lawyer and interpret the constitution. I'm not a lawyer. So it takes spiritual people, and for you to understand spiritual things, you have to put on a spiritual cap before you can also understand spiritual things. Yeah. I tell you as a major prophet and prophet who has prophesied over the years that negative, what the regular lay person, myopic man, call doom prophecy. Doom prophecies are better than me coming to tell you that you have a car, you go to America, you have a baby. Because if you are in the, the covenant of Psalm 91, he that dwells in the sacred place of the Most High, you give birth is your right. Going to America is your right. And don't forget that we have been anointed to destroy the devil. So prophet, and we are the surgeons of God. Prophet, we are the surgeons of God. So when it comes to a prophetic setting, every good prophet picks the thing that the devil is plotting. Well, you know your name. If I mention your name, Mr. Roland Walker, that's no news. For me, it's called entertainment prophecy. Raw prophecy is destroying the ways of the mm -hmm. devil. Jesus said, I've come to destroy the ways of the devil. And I've heard some people ignorantly say that, uh, why don't the prophet walk to the person or reach out to the person? You see, we are, if you don't know, like I, I, I write this, I will not pretend to be his lordship and him, because I'm not a judge, I'm not a lawyer. So if you are not a prophet, try to understand that, try to learn. And thanks to Google, you can just go and know much more about prophetism. Mr. Walker, we have types of prophet. We are minor prophet, we are major prophet. We are prophet that are sent to specific people. Like Prophet Nathan was a prophet that was sent to a specific house. Like Prophet Isaiah, he was a major prophet. Like Agabus, he was a major prophet. Jeremiah was a major prophet. Jonah was a major prophet. Uh, a major prophet is known by your books. It's known by your works you have done. If the Bible is being written in all humility, my works and made Adam prophet in Ghana, our works support that we are major prophet. Watch me. Acts chapter 3. Agabus stood and said, there's going to be famine. That's Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 22. He said that there's going to be a serious famine. Well, did that cause fear and panic? The people that worked on it, there was no farming. Acts chapter 20, they said, who is this? The person is going to Rome. The person is going somewhere. They will tie him publicly, kill him. Paul came arrogantly and said that, I will go. And it did happen. So we have some prophets that have been sent. Like before he came for in this interview, I'm from my time, my brand, I left a lot of people, hundreds of people, just to come and grant this interview. We are so busy. We are... And uh, if you come to church, yes, we'll give you individual prophecy. But some prophecies to the Lord in, it commands you that make it public. If by your next prophecy you're picked up by the police or even national security, uh, what will be your reaction? I'll say Jesus is coming and I'll fulfill scripture. And I'll be fulfilling scripture. I'll, whilst they handcuff me, I'll decree and I declare that Jesus is coming. Anybody who doesn't have Jesus should repent because it is fulfillment of prophecy. That the Bible says that when it gets into the last days, prophets like my nature, the states, evil states will come after us. And again, the person I'm following, Matthew 27, Matthew 28, Jesus was arrested. So who am I? Why, did, why was Jesus arrested? He was arrested because he was telling truth to power. So if I'm telling truth to power, if I'm prophesying, and I'm speaking a man of God, I'm telling what the Lord is saying, that's yet the Lord. And somebody feels he's so powerful and he feels uncomfortable with that, and he want to come, come after me, arrest me. I'll say praise the Lord. But don't forget that when you touch me, it's not me you have touched, you have touched heaven. 
when you touch any prophet in this nation, it's not me. It's not that prophet you have touched. You have touched heaven. If you touch any church, it's not the church you have touched. You have touched heaven. And the Bible says that it is a dreadful thing, a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. And throughout history, nobody has touched a prophet and a person ended well. Nobody has touched a church and a person and the descendant of that person ended well. Are you threatening the state, the state of Ghana? I'm not, I'm not threatened. I'm, I'm a prophet. I'm talking on the ticket of the word of God. I'm, I'm telling what the word of God says. The Bible says, touch no man, no for that matter, and do my prophet no harm. May I also say that no prophet is perfect. No prophet is perfect. I have been saying that there are certain prophecies, Mr. Walker, I've given, I've inspired to give over the years that if I'm giving the same circumstance, the same message, I will, I will not present it as I presented it. I began to say, so we get better. Don't forget that we are also agents of change in, develop, in the development of the nation. And we are also a source of bread and butter for, for, for people in the nation. So if maybe one prophet or the other is doing something which, which is wrong or something, I think that we can call the person behind the bar. Or the Bible says the elders of the state or the elders of the we should talk to the person, advise the person. But we should not, no, no, it, is, it will be a dangerous thing that any group of person or organized persons or a person will come after a prophet who is called of God or a church which is of God. It will, and again, the nation will be denied mercies. The nation will be denied mercies. And anytime a nation does that, anytime a government is doing that, it is a sign that that government is a failed government. It is a sign that that leadership is a leadership that is in crisis. There's a current ongoing issue. We're talking about the Ghanaian and Family Values Bill, and uh, it relates to the LGBTQI plus community. And it's all about how the Ghanaian feels that their moral values need to be promoted. But let me ask you, what do you think should be the position of the president in the first place on the subject? Sir, I don't have any other position. My position is clear which is Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. The Bible says that a man should not lie with his fellow man, and a woman should not lie with a fellow woman. The Bible says that it is an abomination to the seventh generation. And Mr. Walker, when the Bible puts a seventh generation, we are talking about 70 years. So that means that anybody that is a lesbian, that is a gay, plus, yeah, plus, 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 whatever, is cursed by God. It's an abomination. That's the first one. So to answer your question, what should be the position of the present? Rise and fall depends on the president. And we thank God that in Ghana, we have an executive president. I'm a student of history. The former president, John Dramani Mahama, was emphatic that the culture, the values of the people he superintends over as president, they, they hate that. So it is a no-no. President Mills also came out. He said, it's not his time. So I'm expecting his excellence in the neck of Wado. Not to throw it like he threw it to parliament. Not to play around the table. He should be emphatic because everybody hates it. The Muslims hate it. Traditionalists hate it. We all hate it. We, I don't have any independent mind. The mind, what the Bible is saying is what I'm pushing. So, the, the, you see, we should not even waste some George, Honorable Sam George, their energy or whatever. This thing, you see, we have more weightier issues to deal with. I went to Abu School. The room that four people were sleeping in my time, the year 2000 to 2003, 14, 18 people are sleeping in that room. We have more serious issues to deal with. My road from Asamankese to Brikumanso, that environment, we have more serious road problem. Last I was going to OT for crusade. The whole road is about, we should stop about, we should not even give it a mention because it is an abomination. And I'm using this your platform to suggest to the powers that be that let's come out clear, like President Mills came out clear, like President John Mahama came out clear. He did not, he did not gallivant around the table. He was very straight. That not his time because the people doesn't like it. But he says, the president now, he was, so he has given space and people are just playing around it. And I think that this is something that, of course, is bound to happen, but it should not be in our time. It should not be in our time. We should not even mention it. Like, again, I said, I've been to Israel. Genesis chapter 19 talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. And when you go to Israel today, there's everything in the Bible is in physically present, except Sodom and Gomorrah. So that is the extent and degree, how grievous this thing is. That this thing is not something that I want to even use my mouth to mention. It. And let's not forget that anytime civilization, people do modernization, people do, I know my right, we are pushing our right, we become animalistic. Anytime 
a group from the, the era of classism to the era of Romans, to the Egyptian time, to the Bebe, to the Phoenician civilization, to the Iron civilization, the Bronze and Gold civilization. Anytime a group of people pushes that our rights, our rights, our rights, our rights, our right, they become animalistic. They become animals, respectfully. So we are suggesting humbly to His Excellency the President to put a finality to this. But you see, Roland, as a prophet, I've prayed about this. So this will be the agenda, Mr. Walker. Parliament will pass it. And I saw three people, and this is a prophecy. Parliament will pass the bill against the LGD, blah, blah, blah. But they use three people with an unseen hand. They will go to the judiciary, and the judiciary will reverse it on the ticket of human rights. Mark it down, it will come to pass. Yes. So the Church of Pentecost should rise up again. And all those who have voted, all those who have voices, they, because I saw it, and this is a prophecy. Yes, this is a prophecy. They will pass the LGT, blah, blah, blah. Parliament will pass it. But I saw some people. You see, let me tell you something. Eh? There is a man that I respect him so much. And maybe he might not remember me, but once I was in Legon, those stand behind Sabah Hall, that is Professor Tukuba. He will stop in his pickup, his saloon car, stop being advising us. And this. I'm so, I'm so, I'm, I'm a little bit worried that he added his voice to that. But what I'm saying as a prophet here is that the parliament will pass it. There was an agenda to delay it, but the delay we are praying against it, it will not happen. They will pass it quickly. Maybe, maybe by March, so they will pass it. When they pass it, three people rise up. Take it to the judiciary, Supreme Court. The Supreme Court of Ghana will reverse it on the ticket of human rights. So the only person that can bring this LGT blah, blah, blah to a finality is Excellency, the Executive President of the Republic of Ghana. And we are calling on him to make a bold and a definite position that we don't have it. We will not have it, not our time. So that is what I will speak to you. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Um, what do you seem to hear to be the concerns of the ordinary Ghanaian, either um, those on the streets or even the members of your church or visitors about the state of Ghana, the economy, etc.? I'll be measured again because of the time we are in. Because anybody that wants to be mischievous will try to use that law of fear and panic, and that is fishing expedition through it. You understand? But to answer your question, I'm not talking about Ghana, but wise men watching me will understand. A nation called Umufia. Mr. Walker, for, ah, by the mercies of Grammy Genova, see, I'm the human fund of a, 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 a thriving ministry. For the first time, around 5, 6, 6 30 a.m., you saw people queue on my church premises, asking for as low as five cities, as low as 10 cities, for bread and butter. People don't have money to even pay offering. People, now everybody, every man of God watching me, attendance is not like first. Because you call people, even money for lorry fare, they don't have it. And if there's, uh, I mean, we'll be blunt. I'm, I want to be known as a very blunt and uncompromised man of God. The times are not good. The economy is not, things are not bad. Things are bad. People that three, four, five years ago, they were so solid, they were strong men, they have become like little men and women that they are even asking for bread and butter. So how much more about the people that those times they did not have it? So to answer your, your question and listen, Mr. Walker, my members, and not just my members, because I get a lot of pastors also talking to them. I mean, times are hard. And if those who are listening will listen well, we are, every Tuesday, given one month, I talk to no less than, or I encounter no less than 5,000 people, one-on-one. -on -one. Every Tuesday is my consultation in my church. So if you want to have real physical material feedback, we can give you the real. People are suffering. Bankers are suffering. Our mothers are suffering. People are, look, I'm scared of HIV, which is on the rise. Because as low as five cities, 10 cities now, our sisters are giving themselves out. Things have, you see, if nobody is telling the powers that be in Umufia, uh, and you see, let's tell truth that Mr. Mr. Walker, journalists are crying, businessmen are crying, contractor, there's a contractor that committed suicide. He was in my church. He committed suicide. Yeah, he committed suicide because his check didn't go through 
and they, they sold his house in Trazaco. He has given up. So times are bad. Times are hard, I'm telling you. Times are extremely hard. Extremely hard. That's quite interesting. You, you are a very controversial person, aren't you? That is your word. If, like I said, you can't carry the oil on me and not be maybe controversial. And I'm a truthful person. I speak the truth. I'm very uncompromised. I speak the truth. If it's yellow, it's yellow. If it's green, I want to say it's green. What would you like to tell the new IGP? Oh, I, I, what I would tell him is that I've not really, I've not, but the new IGP, okay, we love you, we pray for you. I'm, I'm happy that he's a Christian. So the last time I checked, Mr. Roland, the, one of the IGP, uh, IGP is in Inusa, Inusa. At that time, I had, I had one, the crime officer, CID, one of the crime officers was my friend. So once in a while, I pass by. Anytime I go to the police head office, you could see the projection of Islam. Islam. You could see that a lot of Muslim, Buddha, around. So he's a Christian. Apart from pushing the agenda of the Constitution to the latter, he should push Christ. At the end of the day, he will not be judged by the Constitution of Ghana. The current, whoever the IGP is, he will be judged by the Word of God. And... Anybody through our history, through our history, uh, I would say that Ghanaians are people that, Domovo, the former uh, auditor general, President Mills, President Mahama, his essence the former president, Nana Kufu Ado, the same person that says, Oziana, 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 they will say crucify him. So we'll pray for him. I think that I've spoken figuratively. He should push the constitution. But he will be judged by the word of God. I think he's a Christian. The letter that I read about is a Christian. And we pray for him. He's a young guy. He's an inspiration. I love the way he dresses. One of his shoes, I watched it. He went to, there's something like, there's some knock, knock, knock on it. I love his, He dresses well. And he's a handsome man. So we are praying for him that he should succeed. Uh, but he should not, as it were, allow himself to be infiltrated to achieve a parochial draconic interest. Somebody's presidential ambition or whatever, uh, he should not be used to push that agenda. Well, thank you for speaking to us. It's been a delight. Um, very extensive one, and uh, you've, you've been at your blistering best. Very uh, much an orator, I can presume. But um, thank you for speaking to us. Uh, we're talking about uh, Prophet Nigel Gacy. He is the leader and founder for the Prophetic Hill Chapel. It's located on 15 Green Hill Street, Dome. And for many of you, you go on to Google, you get that location as well. But uh, talking about um, where you can get this upload, we're talking about TV3 Ghana on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, as well as 3news.com, and also through the handles of 3FM 92.7. We will be back once again. Bye-bye. Thank you.